Well, hello there. How are you doing today? Do you feel like doing a little bit of DIYing with me? Come on in. Let's get started. What have I got going on for you for today? Well, Today I am bringing to you some DIYs using the galvanized pieces by Crafter Square that you can find at the Dollar Tree. These are amazing pieces. They're on the smaller side, but when you put a few of them together, you can make something amazing. And I've got a few DIYs for you using these. So I'm gonna quit my gabbing, let's jump into it, and let's do some DIYing on a budget. Cause why not? Cause that's what we do here. Let's get to it. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? You'll want to stick around to the end of the video to see if it's your creation that's being featured in today's video. Jumping on into this first DIY. Yep, I'll be using four of these. When I was at Dollar Tree, I believe I picked up 10 of them for today's DIYs. I'm gonna glue these galvanized plaques, plates, uh, you pick, together using some of Dollar Tree's crazy glue, and I am going to kind of reinforce it with some hot glue just to keep this DIY moving. Gluing these together, I'm gonna kind of overlap them just a bit. And like I said, I'm gonna be doing that with four of them. On the back side of these, where the seams of each of these plaques meet, I am going to hit it with a bunch of hot glue, again just to reinforce it and really give it some stability, make it a bit sturdier so these plaques don't bend or come apart. That super glue that you can find in the tool section at Dollar Tree is pretty amazing. It takes though, in all honesty, a couple of hours for it to dry, but once it dries, it is like cement. So I've seen pretty good results when using it with things like these tins. And you can see just how sturdy this piece is, just the way I like it. Now, this is a farmhouse piece. It doesn't have to be for you, but it is for me. And to make it a bit rustic, I'm gonna use some of Craftsmart's metallic acrylic paint in the color of brown and bronze. To give it that rustic, rusted, aged look, I'm gonna apply it with a sponge dabber because it's gonna give it kind of an uneven coverage and that's what I'm going for. The more imperfect this is, the more perfect it will be. Now, rust isn't one color. It's typically two, but I'm gonna start off with the darker brown. Then I am gonna go in with the bronze by Craftsmart because rust does have a bit of an orangish red undertone to it. And I'm gonna accent this distressing with that as well. Taking some of Dollar Tree's decorative nautical rope, it's one of my favorite means of hanging my wall decor pieces, my rustic farmhouse wall decor pieces. What better way than to hang it with some rope? So I'm gonna hit this with a bunch of hot glue here on the back. Then I'm gonna take that same rope and I'm going to tie a knot, kind of making what Kayla used to call a knot stump. And I'm gonna do two of these once I tie the knot, I'm gonna cut this knot off the rope as close to the base of this knot as I can get. And with a bit of hot glue, this knot stump, what's well, gonna go right here, giving this the illusion that the rope is actually going through the metal plaque. Pretty cool, right? Look at how neat that looks. Giving us the look and the feel that we need to achieve with not so much work. Digging on into my stash, pulled out these cardstock letters. These are a four inch cardstock letter. On the back side of them, you see me gluing one of Dollar Tree's smaller wood beads on. I do this because I like dimension in my DIYs. I feel like lifting a letter up off of something like this corrugated metal piece, it's going to add a lot of character it's gonna give it the dimension that I'm looking for, which is then going to elevate this DIY to the next level. Cardstock letters are super budget friendly. You can find them at just about any hobby store, or you can pull out your Cricut if you have one and you can cut them out of cardstock or chipboard, you choose. 
And that there is all there is to this DIY. Let's go take a look at it. Now this was a DIY that was quick, easy, budget friendly with an amazing outcome. Go pick some of these up. I've got more DIYs in store for you using these. I'm gonna need to glue together six Jenga blocks together long ways just as I did here. Then we're gonna glue four more together. Oops, this one kind of fell apart, moved it too early, but we're gonna glue four of them together just as you see here. Now when placing these, we've got two blocks here. Right in between the second and third block is where we're gonna place these four blocks. Now, where we put these really matters because we want things to measure up evenly. So when explaining how to build this washboard or build it using these Jenga blocks, I am going to try my best to articulate this as eloquently as possible, but it is really hard to kind of explain and I feel like you can get more of an idea of what I'm doing by visually seeing how I'm placing these. When I placed these two blocks here, you can see that I actually placed it on top of that row of four, not off to the side. Now, I like to play with Jenga blocks. I like to build things with Jenga blocks. So the placement of these blocks is really important that you do it the way I'm doing it here. So that way you're not left having to cut a bunch of blocks. I will tell you, you do need to cut two of these blocks, but there is an alternative to cutting them, which I will show you at the end. So now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna place four more blocks along the top here, and you will see that as I place these, there will be that corner that is empty. And that is the corner that we actually need to cut the blocks, or we can use the wood cubes by Crafter Square. And so yeah, just go ahead and place four blocks just like so. For the bottom of this washboard, we're gonna go across the bottom with four more Jenga blocks. And this time we're gonna place the first one right at the bottom of that row of six, the first row of six that we did there. Look, it's coming together. So we're gonna finish off this last side with another four blocks. A washboard's got legs, right? Is that what they call it? I don't know. I'm gonna call it legs. So I'm gonna add two additional blocks to the bottom here for the legs. Alrighty, so we've got our base layer of blocks, the framing of our washboard done here, but I want it to be a bit thicker. I want it to be a bit more sturdy. So to do that, I'm gonna add another layer of blocks, but I'm putting the glue down the middle of the existing blocks now because I don't want glue spilling out in between each of the joints or the seams where each of the blocks meet for the front of this. I want it to be as clean as possible. So just by placing that bead of glue down the center and then placing my blocks on top, it's gonna give us a cleaner, more finished look. For this top corner here, I went ahead and I cut a couple of blocks because I have a cutter that I got at Harbor Freight, but you can use these Crafter Square wood blocks just as easily. It's not gonna be the right height of it, but as long as you level it out with the front and the top, you should be good. And if there are any gaps, you could always use some Dollar Tree spackling to fill it in. I feel like that's the easiest way to do it if you don't have a cutter. The cutter that I use from Harbor Freight was 20 bucks, and I gotta show you this because I use it all the time. This is not a sponsored video, I'm just showing you because I love working with Jenga blocks and I find a lot of times that I have to cut them. And so this is the tool that I use to do that. This is good and dry, so guess what it needs? It needs some stain. What am I gonna use? I'm gonna use the Waverly Antique Wax. Now I'm gonna take my galvanized corrugated sheet that you can get at Dollar Tree by Crafter Square. Love these new items. And I am just going to put this out there. You can totally get these online. DollarTree.com has these online. And so my washboard, it needs to be rusted. So to achieve the rusted look, I'm gonna use a sponge dabber and guess what I'm dabbing on here? Some of Waverly's antique wax. It is going to stay on here. It's gonna give us a nice rusted finish. And you wanna use that sponge because Rust isn't even, it kind of beads up. You've got those hard spots on it and that's the look that you're gonna achieve by using a sponge dabber. Then I'm gonna place my galvanized sheet on the back side of my washboard frame. Now you're gonna see it's gonna fit just 
perfectly. You're gonna have just about a centimeter or two of your galvanized sheet that is going to set on the frame of this washboard. And so using some hot glue, really, I'm gonna pound it. I'm gonna use a stick or two to do that. On the sides where it kind of divots down, I'm gonna place just a nice bead going on the galvanized tin and on the washboard. I'm gonna be generous with that glue and this is gonna hold it in place just fine. Switching gears a bit, we've all seen these. I am guessing that just about every Dollar Tree has these girl plaques in stock. Why am I using this one? Because it's a thinner, shorter plaque which is going to cut down on how much we need to cut down this plaque. It was the perfect width, but the length of it was just a bit too long. And so placing it on the back of, I guess my washboard, I saw that I needed to cut just a couple inches off. These plaques are super easy to cut through just by, you see what I'm doing, placing a ruler and using a razor and scoring it, you can snap it apart. If you have some excess plaque left over, you can very easily take your scissors and just trim off that extra stuff there. Extra stuff, you see that? There we go, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. To cover this plaque, yep, I'm gonna use this gray and white gingham scrapbooking paper. This is a very thin paper, but I love the color. I think it's light enough that it's gonna look perfect. It's gonna go good with the wood. My hot glue was right there, so I grabbed it, I used it. I'm gonna place it face down and just, guess what? Cut off the excess paper, just like that. Now this washboard has been around. It has a story to tell. We want it to look like it's years old and this can't be the only clean part on it. It's gotta be aged, distressed. It's gotta look rustic too. So again, to do that, I'm just gonna use my antique wax. It's the perfect color to get that old rusted look. And with this, I'm just gonna go ahead and run a bead of that hot glue right along that outside edge and place this face down on the back of my washboard frame. To hang this, how am I hanging it? You all know I'm gonna use my mm -hmm, go-to method of twine. There is no reason to spend money on any fancy hooks unless you have them in your stash because you took them off of one of Dollar Tree's plaques. This would be the perfect time to pull them out and use them. I don't have any on hand. So I'm gonna tie some twine up, stick it on the back and just pound it with a stick or two of hot glue and we are good to go. Alrighty, getting started. I'll be using one of these larger raw wood plaques by Crafter Square that you can get from none other than the Dollar Tree. This one measures out at 18 inches long by four and a half inches wide. We don't need these pesky holes. So I am gonna take some spackling that I did not get from Dollar Tree. I got it at Walmart because I have not been able to get my hands on any spackling at Dollar Tree in some time. This spackling is cool though because it goes on pink when it dries, it turns white. Just by taking a damp paper towel, you can wipe off the excess spackling while it's wet. This plaque is gonna get a nice coating with some of Waverly's chalk paint in the color of ink. In the floral department, you're gonna find this burlap ribbon that comes in a set of three. You're getting a yard of each. I love this burlap ribbon because it is a bit different than the ribbon that you get on the spool because it doesn't have the cream twine intertwined into it. It's just the burlap itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some hot glue on the outside edges of this now black plaque, lining it with this burlap ribbon, giving it a nice finished look. To this plaque, I am going to add a vinyl decal that I cut out with my Cricut that says, watch me grow. Stickers are a great budget-friendly alternative to using vinyl decals that are made with the Cricut. You can find letter stickers like this pack at Hobby Lobby for about $5. Don't leave Dollar Tree without three of these galvanized corrugated plaques. These plaques are gonna be glued together and I'm gonna do that using some of this Gorilla Glue. This is a clear glue. I don't have any E6000. This glue is amazing. You can get it at Walmart. My Walmart's been out of E6000 lately. They've been out of a lot of things like spray paint. The list goes on and on. 
Gorilla Glue is a great alternative. So on one side, right there on the edge, I'm gonna go ahead and place some of that clear Gorilla Glue. Now you wanna make sure you get the clear because there is different colored glues and it dries the color that it is. On another plaque, I'm also gonna place some glue on this side. Now, I'm not gonna try and explain the sides, but you see that I'm basically putting it on opposite sides because I'm gonna place one of the galvanized sheets on top of both. So you've got two underneath the top one. You see where I'm going here. You need to put it together that way and you wanna make sure that your holes for the plaques, I guess, are all on the same side. Mine are all on the bottom and they will be covered up in this DIY. Going back to our Watch Me Grow plaque, I'm gonna hit this with a ton of hot glue and I am going to place this right in the center of our galvanized plaques that we glue together. Yeah, our galvanized pieces that we glued, you see, I'm, I'm gonna put it right in the center. So those galvanized pieces are actually framing out what is our sign, but we are still not done yet. Oh no, no, because you saw that there are numbers. So what are we gonna do with those numbers? Oh, just wait, this is so stinking cute. For those numbers, I will be using these chalkboard tags. They come in square and this decorative one. I decided to go the decorative route. You're gonna need four packs of these because we need 13 of them in total. So that equals four packs, not three packs, because three packs is 12, haha. <laughs> so to these, what am I gonna do? On the back side, they've got a clothespin that is fairly well glued onto the back of it. I really tried to salvage my clothespins. Some of them were salvageable, some not so much. Using some wire cutters I found was the easiest way to remove it from the back because we don't need them glued where they're at. No, no, we're gonna re-glue them somewhere else, but we don't need this size for these tags. I know I'm totally making it confusing, aren't I? Here is an example of one of the clothespins that did not make it, yeah. And yep, I'm sure you probably guessed it, but each of these tags is going to get a number. And so we are, or letter in this case, right? K through 12 is what each of these tags are going to be labeled with. So much fun this DIY is. I can't wait for you to see the end result. But before that, I'm gonna use some of the mini clothespins on the back of this because like I said earlier, those bigger ones are much too big. So to the clothespin itself, on half of it, I'm gonna place some hot glue and I'm gonna place the clothespin just like so. You can see that I didn't glue the whole pin and I lined it up with that center point there. That is an easy focal point so you know that you're gonna get all your clothespins nice and even and in the right place. And I'm gonna do that to all 13 of my tags. Well, I'm gonna glue them to the bottom of my plaques, the galvanized plaques, the bottom where the holes are, and these tags are gonna cover up those holes. I'm starting with the number six tag because there are 13 tags, so six would be in the middle. It is easiest if you start in the middle and then you can get proper spacing all the way to the outside, and that way you're guaranteed to fit all 12 of your tags on with the same spacing. It really is easy, so you don't have to measure. Cuts down on time. We are so not done with this DIY yet. There's some fine tuning that needs to be done, and I will be doing that using some of these new raw wood beads that you can get at Dollar Tree. They come in square or round, you choose. And those beads, they're gonna go right here up at the top to use as a hanger. To apply these, I'm just gonna use some hot glue. I'm using a hot glue by Gorilla Glue. Gorilla Glue has glue sticks that are amazing that I've seen great results with. I'm using a hot temperature glue gun, not a low temperature. And so I find that the higher temperature glue guns do hold a bit better. And you will see on the back, I don't know if I pointed this out, but I did hit the back of these plaques with a bit of hot glue just to reinforce them along with the Gorilla Glue that I used. I felt like the front of this plaque was missing a little something. I wanted to add just a touch of color. The color I like to add to my rustic farmhouse DIYs 
is the sage green. This is a floral, I guess, pick or stick that you can get at Walmart. It is called lamb ears. You can get a smaller, I guess, bunch for a dollar or you can get the bigger bunch for $1.88. Dollar Tree now has these wood curl roses that come in a four pack. Are these not amazing? Yes, I was looking for an excuse to use these. These are going to be perfect with this DIY. It's gonna blend in with the wood on the tags, with the burlap ribbon, with the wood beads. Oh my word, I love how this came together. Let's go take a look at this. Oh my word. I love this piece. How fun is it? Now this piece was inspired by this frame that I have of my son Ray. It was something that I loved. I didn't have one for Allison and so this is what I've come up with for Allie. I think it is a super fun piece. I think that Allie too will love this piece as much as Ray and Kayla love theirs because they really like to go back and see all the changes over the years. I found these galvanized pieces a few weeks ago at Dollar Tree. I was just looking for an excuse to use them because I love the decorative top on them. It's not a must. They come with the twine equipped on the back. Love this. Why don't they just add twine to everything like this instead of putting holes in it? Seriously, I love this way of doing it so I don't have those pesky holes that I gotta worry about covering up or filling in. To these, they are gonna get some of that Gorilla Glue because I am going to glue them together in turn making them longer. Because why? Because I'm gonna add one of these plaques. This is a smaller plaque. This plaque measures out at a whopping, had to stop the voiceover measure, a whopping 12 inches long by three inches wide. So this is the smaller of the two, a bit bigger than the planks that you get in the six pack. Is it worth $1.25 at Dollar Tree? I don't know. Sometimes I think it might be just for the convenience of it. Creature of habit, and because this is a set, it's going on the same wall. I'm gonna finish these edges off with that same burlap ribbon that I used in the first DIY. This may seem repetitive, and that's because it is. I just wanted to give you a different option to that DIY that I brought you before this one because maybe somebody likes the idea of it but they don't have a little one in school. So here is an alternative for those who maybe have grown kids. And to the back on the bottom, I'm gonna add a string of twine to hang our pictures from. Wanted to do something a bit different than using the tags. If we wanna use the tags, I say use the tags. And these beads are gonna go right here just like this. And look at here, this is the part where we reuse those clothespins that I salvaged off the back of the tags. Because I'm a creature of habit and this is a set that is going up, did I say, on the same wall, I'm gonna go ahead and use those lamb ears again just to add a small embellishment up in the corner there along with my new favorite thing from Dollar Tree, those wood roses. Oh my goodness, those are everything. I think I might be a little obsessed with them. No, I know I am. How quick and easy was this DIY and look at the outcome. I love this. I am definitely going to be making more of these. I feel like I'm going to have a gallery wall that looks kind of like this. Who is today's KB Creations crafter of the day? It's going out to Ashley Thomas, who's bringing to us her recreation of my giant farmhouse sign piece that I have up in my kitchen. Ashley, I am absolutely loving, loving, loving your spin and your twist on this piece. Thank you so much for sharing your creation with us today. Which one is your favorite? I don't know that I can pick one, but that new kitchen one is definitely one of my favorites and it's one that it's gonna find its way into my kitchen above my cabinets because I love it so much. I hope you all enjoy today's Dollar Tree DIYs using, yeah, you know what I'm gonna say, the galvanized pieces by Crafter Squared that you can get just about any time at Dollar Tree, so go grab some. If you're looking for more DIY inspiration, well, you know where you can click, right over here, and it'll take you to some of my past favorites. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. 
Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy. But most of all, stay positive, please. And bye for now, everybody.